And then I'm Dana West. I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, but I am the dietitian here and the one who's here basically full time. So um, we are happy to be in Eureka Springs. We have been here for two years now and um, we've, we're excited about helping the community learn how to take care of their health. Okay. Um, so Abundant Health, I didn't realize I had already changed my slide, but Abundant Health Wellness Center's desire is to help individuals manage disease through simple lifestyle changes and also, if possible, uh, reverse the disease as well as manage the disease. Okay, so we have great research to back up the, this very fact that we can indeed now reverse lifestyle related chronic disease. It's a good news to a lot of people who just feel like they have to suffer from the ravaging complications of chronic disease and we don't. So we have good news for you this evening. Um, I also in your packet you have um, a donation slip. This event is a free event. There's no strings attached. However, we are a nonprofit organization who is desirous of reaching the community. And if you would be interested in helping us um, do that, then you can, if you are so moved, fill out the donation sheet um, and that would be much appreciated. But that's all we'll say about finances, okay? Um, we should also let you know at the beginning that we are a Christian organization. And so our mission is to cooperate with uh, the Creator and His compassionate work in the restoration of your health. And we understand that you very well may have different uh, spiritual um, um, choices and we will respect that um, but we would like you to know from the start where we are coming from so that uh, when you hear references made to that you'll understand that this is the position that we have and we have that posted right on our wall for everyone to see um, so that everyone knows the position that we take and we do want to treat the whole person spiritually physically emotionally as well as spiritually okay so without further ado then I would like to begin um, this evening with a word of prayer our gracious Heavenly Father, we just come boldly before your throne asking your presence to be here with us, knowing that you are our great physician. We ask that all the words that will be said will bring you honor and glory, and that we will hear uh, what we need to hear individually. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so we're going to jump right in with the essentials of health. Again, I am Dana West, and I will be doing this first presentation. The concept, I'm just going to turn it this way so I don't have to look too far backwards, and I can read appropriately. The concept that Western diseases are lifestyle related and therefore potentially preventable and reversible is the most important medical discovery of the 20. 20th century, according to Dennis Burkett. Now, many of you might not be familiar with Dennis Burkett, but he is a great researcher, obviously uh, the discoverer of Burkett's um, lymphoma. But he's also um, one who helps us understand the digestive process and how uh, the time it takes for food to get from mouth to quite frankly, out, all right? And so, <laughs> uh, he, he, that was kind of his field. And so it's he, very interesting to read some of his uh, research information. But, you know, if we understand that the longer food sits in our gut, the more disease we're going to end up having. And so the faster, not too fast, however, but at, if it goes through at a healthy rate within about 24 hours, we drastically cut our um, risk of disease. So good information from Dennis Burkett. All right, so um, this evening, we're going to be focusing in on diabetes. And our objectives for this evening are we want to understand what is the root cause of diabetes 
and what is essential for reversing diabetes. We also want to understand what is the power of food and also um, what are the, what's the truth as well as the myths of understanding diabetes and its management. And there are a lot of them, so we're just going to start with um, that topic right there, is the myths or the facts of diabetes. So we're going to take a little poll here. How many of you think sugar causes diabetes? Is that a myth or is that a fact? Who doesn't think sugar causes diabetes? Okay, we got a few who think it doesn't cause diabetes. All right, carbohydrates are bad for diabetics. Myth? Okay, myth? Fact. All right, split 50-50. <laughs> Proteins are better than carbohydrates for diabetics. Myth? Yeah, I, we'll go myth and then fact, so you'll know what's coming. Okay, fact? All right, we've got most people thinking that is the truth. All right, or fact. You can adjust medications, insulin, to cover whatever you eat. Myth? Okay. Fact. All right. Desserts are not allowed with diabetes. Um, myth. <laughs> All right. And what about fact? Okay. Go one. Uh, a diabetic diet is too restrictive. That's an opinion. I guess that's not really a fact, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, see how many of you at least think whether that's a myth or if that's an op opinion of fact. Okay? It, let's, do, let's do myth first. Okay? Myth, all right, and then fact. Okay, no takers because I said it was an opinion, right? <laughs> all right. Diabetic diet has too many rules and is too hard to understand. Myth? Okay. And what about fact? All right. Yeah. Another opinion, really, right? We, can, we are welcome to our own opinions. This is difficult. This is too hard to understand, right? Uh, you have to count carbohydrates and sugar grams for the rest of your life if you have diabetes. Uh, myth? Okay, and what about fact? Okay, fact. You might have to do that. All right, well, by the end, you will know the answers to all of these, whether it's a myth or whether it's a fact. Okay, so what is diabetes? Diabetes is a metabolic disease in which the body inability, the body has an inability to produce any or enough insulin and causes an elevation of glucose in the blood. It can also be further uh, explained that in actuality type 2 diabetes is also uh, related to the resistance of the insulin that the body produces and we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, so put in a simple way, diabetes is where there's too much glucose or sugar in the blood or in the urine, okay? So, there are three common types of diabetes. The first one you've heard of is type one diabetes in which the pancreas no longer produces insulin, okay? So the pancreas, basically the islet cells of the pancreas to be more specific, do not produce insulin, it does not work, okay? Something has attacked it to make it not work anymore. Also, type 2 diabetes, which is the most common type of diabetes, 95% um, of those with diabetes have uh, this type, type 2, all right? And um, you may still take insulin with type 2 diabetes. Just because you're on insulin doesn't necessarily mean that you are type 1, okay? Um, type 3, no, not type 3, there is a type 3, but we're not going to be talking about that <laughs> today. Um, gestational diabetes is also another more common type of diabetes. 10% of all pregnancies um, will result, have the complication of gestational diabetes, and that is in the United States. Okay, so. If I can get it to work, then we'll move forward. And if not, 
All right, so diabetes is uncommon in a lot of countries around the world. You know, the places where they have McDonald's, right? <laughs> or where they don't have McDonald's, then it's, it's quite rare. And it's not just McDonald's, you understand, but it's that type of food. But those places around the world are actually becoming um, less and less, right? Because McDonald's and the like are going everywhere. All right? Um, but here in America, in Western countries, diabetes is a common killer. 29.1, um, and this was in 2014, 29.1 um, million in the United States have diabetes. However, it is projected that by 2030, um, that will double, and by 2050, that will double again. So, one in three, as we'll see here in a minute, by 2050 are projected to have full-blown diabetes. But there's another 15 million currently, as of 2014, who do not even know that they have diabetes. So diabetes is, is a, a quiet disease. You've heard of high blood pressure being um, the silent killer, right? Well, our body is really quite amazing because it doesn't throw out complaints. It puts up with a lot of abuse before it throws out its first complaint. And in fact, it will um, continue to do its best to survive, if you will, until it is compromised to 70 to 90 percent. And if you're one who your body gives you signals at 70, you're the lucky one. Most of us, it's really about 90 percent compromised when um, the body throws out its first complaint. And that is why we have uh, people who will come into the office or who will call and say, my sugar's been fine. The doctor's been checking my sugar, and I've never had any problem with my blood sugar. And then all of a sudden, I go to the doctor, and he tells me my sugar is 346, or some very high number. And what happened? Well, this is what happened. The body finally said, I can't take it anymore. And it, it throws out complaints and says, this is, this is what's going on. So we had a gentleman who walked into my office um, and his um, blood sugar, well he had gotten out of the hospital a month ago with diabetic ketoacidosis, which means his sugars were very high. Um, he was on insulin, he was morbidly obese, um, he was on oral medications as well, and completely out of control with his diabetes. And so he started our program in four days, he was completely off of his insulin. He was off of his oral medications, all in just four days. Our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when we start fueling them the way they were intended to be fueled, they can cooperate. Now, not all diabetes is reversible, and certainly type 1 diabetes is not reversible. So let me just uh, throw that out there now just to clear up any confusion that it might. But type 2 diabetes is about 90% reversible, okay? And as we go through, I'm getting ahead of myself, but as we go through, we'll, we'll find out what what does it take to reverse disease, all right? So the dollar amount that we actually spend on diabetes is 240 billion, 245 billion dollars a year, all right? And just in comparison, in 1958, we spent 1.6 million dollars on diabetes. Oh, I apologize, oh, it was one uh, point six million who had diabetes in 1958. Sorry for that clarification. All right, so currently in the United States, one out of 10 individuals have diabetes, okay? So you can count up how many people are here, and um, at one out of 10, we can generally say that's how many people have been diagnosed with diabetes. But again, in, by 2030, how many people are projected to have diabetes? Three in 10. Three in 10, mm hmm And then again, by 2050, yeah, 2050, how many are going to have it? One in three. 
1 and 3. Okay? Did I, 6 and 10? That's close, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, um, Diabetes is definitely a disease that's really a pandemic, and it's a pandemic on steroids and it's running rampant, um, but we don't have to be one of those statistics. So let's look at what is the criteria for uh, diabetes. So pre-diabetes, um, your sugar is um, 100 to 125, okay? That's the area where we are, we start seeing you won't have any complaints, your body won't be throwing out any complaints with prediabetes, but we're starting to see microvascular damage with sugars that are over 100 fasting or over 40, 40 or over um, or random glucose. That means it can be after you eat or, or at any, any time um, other than fasting. If it's 140, then uh, it can uh, start seeing microvascular. You can be diagnosed with diabetes if your blood sugar is 126 or, uh, that would be for fasting, or 200 for a random glucose, okay? So what that means is that's when we know for sure you're having, what, 50 years ago? That's when we actually thought the microvascular damage began. But we know otherwise, anything over 100 is when we're actually seeing that microvascular damage, all right? So one uh, glucose reading, fasting, 126, uh, the doctor can diagnose you with diabetes. Or if you have two um, readings of 200 or more, then he will, he, she, will, uh, can diagnose you with diabetes, all right? Also, just to understand where you are with risk, if your body is still able to manage those blood sugars levels, but if you are 50 pounds overweight or you, if you have triglycerides that are over 200, you are at increased risk for insulin resistance. We'll talk about that in a minute, um, which also is called metabolic syndrome, which can lead to diabetes. Okay. You're at very high risk for uh, developing diabetes. All right, so a bunch of statistics. Hard to keep all that straight in your head. Um, so we'll go on to more practical things. What are the complications of diabetes? Well, you have the elevated cholesterol and triglycerides that can lead to a heart attack. High blood pressure that can lead to a stroke. Blindness, kidney failure, urinary tract infections, which um, you have increased susceptibilities to infections, as well as um, sexual um, symptoms, impotence, polycystic ovarian syndrome, infertility. There's also what's called neuropathy, or the loss of sensation in your extremities, your hands and feet. Um, the gentleman that I just uh, referred to before, um, his legs, he, he had had diabetes for, he had known he'd had diabetes for over 10 years, but I would assume he probably had it for much longer than 10 years. Um, his legs were purple up to his knees, and this is what uh, the extremities can look like when you do not have a good blood supply there or where you have the neuropathy that's uh, interfering and you don't have the sensation anymore in your hands or your feet. So also, it makes it very difficult for wounds to heal. Um, which then can lead to amputations, and we're all familiar with that, and I didn't put any gross pictures up here for your sake to, <laughs> to see that exactly right. <laughs> all right, so the good news is that you can reverse uh, type 2 diabetes. It's not only preventable, it's not only manageable, but it is indeed reversible with certain lifestyle changes that would include uh, diet, exercise, and proper sleep, the avoidance of negative, negative thoughts. Did you know that actually plays a part in the role of developing disease, including diabetes? So you're going to be learning about the essentials of health, and that's why it's called Essentials of Health Wellness Event. Um, so diabetes type 2 can be reversed through exercise according to WebMD. 
that's where this information on this slide is taken from. And they say um, you can reverse it depending on how long you have had the condition as well as, well as how severe it is. Now you remember the gentleman that I referred to before. He was pretty severe, I would uh, say. Um, and yet he still had success. Um, so it really depends on the individual as to how long they've had it and how severely it has progressed. The lady who came into my office and uh, her hemoglobin A1C was 14.7. Uh, now if you happen to read the slide before, um, if your hemoglobin A1C is above uh, 6.7, then we can diagnose you with diabetes. Not myself, I don't diagnose. The doctors can <laughs> diagnose you with diabetes, okay? Um, so if um, her sugar was, four, not, uh, her hemoglobin A1C was 14.7, you know that's very much out of control. So she came into my office, wanted to reverse her diabetes. Um, I asked that we get um, some lab work done and so she went to the doctor and had that lab work done to test what her insulin levels were because with uh, glucose that high either she's simply not taking her medication at all she was on oral medications or we have a bigger problem and so um, the levels of insulin and C peptide were um, tested and sure enough her pancreas was not producing enough insulin anymore and so um, she, it was recommended that she actually go on insulin to be able to control her diabetes and at that point that's when that's a scenario where it's not going to reverse so she would fall into the 10 percent category and those are very sad days but the good news is her hemoglobin a1c now is 6.5 so she's not going to be experiencing the ravaging complications of this disease as we have just uh, gone over so by getting proper treatment you still don't have to have the disease progress on and on and on okay so um, they also give a definition. This is webmd.com. Um, Reverse um, means being off medications, but still engaged in lifestyle program to stay off the medications. So almost always uh, when a patient comes in, they get off their insulin, they've worked really hard to, to acquire their goal, and it's almost within a very short period of time that um, we actually start seeing the sugars come up. Not because the treatment has changed, but because they have not, uh, relaxed a little bit. And that um, really impacts, while well, I met my goal, and now I'm free of diabetes. But I tell all my patients, it takes longer than a couple months and off insulin to actually completely reverse disease to where you don't have to think about it anymore. And so I, I tell people, give it at least a good year. Of course, we need them to actually do it for a, life, uh, a lifetime. Um, because as soon, your body is already programmed to um, be susceptible to a disease. So we really have to stay on the lifestyle program that has reversed disease. And that's what WebMD is trying to say here is just because you're off the medication doesn't mean you're cured. It means that you need to continue with the lifestyle that has gotten you to the point that you've been able to get off the medication. Um, there are several uh, lifestyle essentials and uh, Nancy Aridacel is going to be going over several of those that will uh, help reverse disease and kind of putting the puzzle together and that will be tomorrow evening. All right. Um, so the quote that I gave you is from Anne Albright from the CDC and that's who WebMD.com was quoting. All right, so here is another um, journal 
um, Journal of American Medicine Association that uh, tells us there are certain vital behaviors for managing diabetes. Um, weight loss is going to be important and just a 5 to 10 percent weight loss can improve the glucose much better and reduce the medication. So while we don't focus on weight loss per se here, by following the program, it does help uh, bring off the weight. Also, exercise is very important. We were made to move. Our bodies, if you watch a baby, right, you'll see them, they're constantly moving. And so it's important maybe that we don't have uncontrolled movements like babies. They don't know necessarily when to stay still and when to move. But uh, we have that uh, frontal lobe developed that's going to tell us when we can sit and be quiet. But also we have the frontal lobe that's going to tell us we need to get up and move. And uh, science would tell us that we need to be moving every hour. Just for two to three minutes will make a huge difference in our blood sugar control. But we also need a concentrated time of exercise. So the recommendation here is 60 minutes. However, yeah, oh, I didn't see it there. Okay, yeah, 60 minutes. However, that doesn't all need to be at one time. So you can break that up into six 10 minute segments, or you can break it up into three 20 minute segments and if you haven't exercised in a long time 60 minutes is not your starting goal okay five minutes I've, I've had patients who start out with that two minute just you know trying to move every hour for two minutes I had one patient who got a dog so that it would force her <laughs> to get up and move you know at least a couple times a day to take it out and take care of its business so um, definitely exercise is going to be a vital or essential part of reversing diabetes. Um, those who exercise actually have better control of their eating habits as well, um, cutting the calories, and also they're more likely to participate in uh, group activities and education that are going to encourage them with their lifestyle changes. Um, and those who exercised for at least 60 minutes every day were more likely to be off their uh, medications and classified at least as pre-diabetes within a year. Again, WebMD tells us that there are vital behaviors for managing diabetes. Again, it's weight control, exercise, and nutrition. And they specify for us exactly what is that nutrition that's going to help us. Well, fiber helps control uh, blood sugar. And so where is fiber found? Who can tell me? Fruits and vegetables, correct. Where else? Beans, correct, that's the king of fiber, are the legumes, or the beans, peas, and lentils. Grains, nuts, and, and seeds, yes. Okay, so if you notice, those happen to all be plant foods. So animal foods do not contain any fiber at all, so if fiber is going to be essential, then it's naturally going to be important for us to increase our plant foods, okay? Um, they also want a high water content. These same plant foods are going to be high in water content um, and it needs to be low in calories. How many calories are in one cup of raw vegetables? Anyone want to take a guess? Not quite, but almost. <laughs> okay, we have zero. It's a little bit more than that. Who would like to take another guess? Three? Okay, that's the right answer, 25. Now, how many calories of that are you gonna absorb? Well, that's a whole nother conversation and it's not very many that you're gonna absorb from the calories because the fiber is actually going to take care of some of those calories. So, um, but yes, if you are eating vegetables, fruits, whole grains, um, beans, these are lower calorie foods. And so again, they're going to be beneficial uh, for the whole process of reversing not only diabetes but disease in general. 
All right. And they also recommend uh, avoiding refined sweeteners and refined starches. So what does, what does refined mean? Can anyone tell me? Processed, okay. Over processed foods. Okay, yes, because we process our food. Even chopping them would be considered processing. But over processing, it means that a part of that food has been removed. All right, let's just take a grain for instance. All right, you start with whole wheat, and you have about 20 nutrients in that uh, whole wheat. All right. But when you refine it, those nutrients come out, and it's what you have left is the starch, the protein, and the minimal amount of fat that is in the grain. So you have the what's called macronutrients, but all the micronutrients, the vitamins and the minerals, they have been removed. Well, when they first started the refining process, they realized, oh, we have a problem. People are not being able to keep up with the important nutrients. So they didn't put all 20 back, they put seven back. And then we call it an enriched food. Now, if I, um, if you gave me a 20 and I gave you back seven dollars for, to cash that for you, would you feel enriched or depleted? <laughs> All right, so if we understand this is what's happening with our refined products, then we know we don't have the nutrients that are necessary for total proper absorption of that food. God has made our food and packaged it very well for us so that we know the nutrition is there for the proper absorption. Now there might be allergies and things like this that might interfere with our ability to properly absorb that food, but on a general basis, as long as we can tolerate the food, the nutrition should be there for its proper absorption. Now, I will also say regarding beans, there's plenty of people who simply cannot tolerate that high fiber bean and it makes them sick. So, you know, we have to individualize and that's where my job comes in and, and I find uh, a great pleasure actually out of individualizing the program to meet the individual's needs. Um, so we can talk if you have uh, specific needs that need to be addressed on a one-to-one -one basis. So in 1976, this is not new information as you're going to see, um, James Anderson, he is a um, professor or was a professor of medicine at the Kentucky School of Medicine or College of Medicine. And he was interested in diabetes, what it takes to reverse diabetes even back then. And um, so he decided he was going to see how long it would take to actually create diabetes. So he uh, fed his medical students, they were paid and they agreed to it, it was a volunteer um, uh, study. So he fed them one pound of sugar. How much, of, how much sugar is one pound of sugar a day? Tell me in cups because we can understand cups. We think it's a lot, right? Okay, it's about two cups. Okay, so this is how much sugar he was feeding them a day. Now, some Americans eat this much sugar every day. Now, not in this form, of course, and it sat in my office in the window and it melted so it won't even come out <laughs> off the bottom. But, um, so, they didn't eat just pure sugar like this. They ate it in other forms, the candies and things like this, where it might be easier to get down than just spooning in sugar, right? But Americans, we eat it, uh, take it in, say, we wake up, we have our coffee, we dump in a teaspoon, two teaspoons, whatever, into the coffee, right? And maybe we have, this isn't unheard of, maybe a, a Danish or some sort of pastry to go along with that. And then uh, we have a a healthy granola bar in for a snack, right? The all natural kind, right? And would you know that just in one bar you could have up to six teaspoons of sugar? 
but we call it healthy of course it's all natural the label says so right and so we can easily start adding up for lunch we might have a couple cookies um, and uh, for a snack we have some yogurt but we put some cram craisins in there right craisins are not low in sugar my friends <laughs> they sure do taste good though don't they I wonder why um, and the yogurt do you know it has as much sugar now this isn't just plain yogurt this would be the uh, you know the kind with fruit in it and fruits good for us right so we have the fruit yogurt and do you know that has just as much sugar as a coke how much how much how many teaspoons does a coke have anyone know Seven, eighty. <laughs> Any other guesses? Fifteen. It, it's about ten. Okay, ten teaspoons of sugar. Your yogurt is twelve teaspoons of sugar for one cup. For one cup, yeah. And it's really talked about as a healthy food. Good source of calcium, which it might have calcium in it, but at what cost <laughs> you know because um, sugar actually has an adverse effect on our bones as well um, so anyway moving on through our day we had that for a snack and then of course for dinner we're going to have a dessert you know something sweet makes a meal complete I'm sure you've heard that so we're going to have vanilla it's not chocolate it's vanilla cake um, yellow cake with vanilla frosting right how many teaspoons of sugar do you think? 27. <laughs> Any other guesses? He's not far off. <laughs> He's not far off. It, it actually is 55 grams of sugar, which equates to about um, 12 teaspoons of sugar. So, But once you add the ice cream on top of that, Let's say it's just one scoop, right? Just one scoop. You're actually adding three to six more teaspoons of sugar on top of that. And then, I don't know, let's throw in a snack before bedtime too. And oh, I forgot the Cokes throughout the day. You know, four Cokes, let's say four Cokes. And maybe some of you think that's a lot. And if so, praise the Lord. But I have clients who come in and they don't drink any water at all and that is their water and so four cloaks really isn't that much for them in fact they drink the 20 ounce cokes okay so we're just talking when uh, the size of a coke we're talking the 12 ounce cokes the little cans okay when we say 10 teaspoons of sugar if you added all that up you have come to 96 teaspoons of sugar which that's what this is so you can see Americans actually do get quite a bit of sugar in very easily even if you only did half of that you're still getting a cup of sugar in so what yes yes Eli okay Five grams of sugar in a teaspoon. Okay? Hmm? 5.5, 5, 6, yeah. <laughs> we, we just go with five, it's easy. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a little over five. So if you do, uh, if it has uh, 16, 16, no, that's not right. Let's go with one teaspoon has five. <laughs> That's going to be easiest. Okay. Um, all right. So back to his study, which I didn't get very far on that. Um, so he fed them um, a one pound of sugar. And he tested their sugar for 11 weeks. And how many ended up with diabetes, do you think? Is that three or zero? Zero. Zero is the correct answer. None got diabetes. But isn't sugar a problem with diabetes? Absolutely. Sugar is a problem with diabetes once you have diabetes, but it is not going to create diabetes. So he decided to try adding fat to the diet, and he Oh, I don't have it up there. And he um, gave them 65% fat. 
fat in their diet. Now that's quite a bit of fat. But again, if you're on an animal-based diet without many fruits and vegetables, then you can easily get a 65% um, high-fat diet, okay? And within two weeks, 72% of those in the study had transient diabetes, okay? It was sugar and fat combination, but obviously not that much sugar, but um, it wasn't a full pound anymore. Um, and I don't have how much sugar it was, but he did add the fat, and it was a 65% fat, okay? So then he took the 72% who had um, transient diabetes, put them on a low-fat diet, and reversed that transient diabetes. All right, so his, his conclusion was this. He says, with a diet very low in fat, yet high in fiber, 50 to, excuse me, 50 to 75% of type two diabetics could normalize their blood sugar levels and get off insulin within weeks. Now understand this was transient diabetes, which is different from full-blown diabetes. You can create a high sugar that would categorize as diabetes and obviously they're getting it right as it happens and the body's going to come back down very quickly, okay? But still, we have seen this, as I gave the story of the first gentleman, um, within four days. He was off all his medication. Oh, and I should tell you, four months later, currently, he's still off all his medications. He's doing great. He's lost 70 pounds, right? He doesn't have his feeling back in his extremities yet, um, but he's doing great, all right? So uh, good news uh, for those of us who have diabetes already. All right. So as I said, this is not new information. All the way back in 1955, in a very reputable medical journal called The Lancet, it says, on a very low-fat diet, the endogenous insulin begins to assert its curative effects within days, okay? Cure is not a word that we use very often in the medical society. So this is a very bold statement back in 1955. Most patients can stabilize on such a diet plan alone and some patients are totally cured. Good news, right? All right, let's move it up to 2017, what are we saying today? Fat in the pancreas and liver shut down insulin producing cells leading to spikes in blood sugar levels. Okay? We understand now that the fat in our diet has a paralyzing effect on the insulin and the cells are not able to receive the glucose that the insulin is trying to bring in. All right, it cannot bring down the glucose levels. So we need to understand glucose, insulin, and fat a little bit better. And we do not have a clock in here, so I'd just like to know how I'm doing on time. It's 55 minutes already. I'm having so much fun, and I haven't gotten very far. So <laughs> we might have to continue this on Sunday, where I get to speak again. Um, but I get to go for five more minutes, so we'll um, continue on. Type 2 diabetes. Uh, glucose is the fuel for the body. This is what the body's preferred source of, glu of energy is, is from glucose. Okay? So if um, the insulin is not able to get the glucose in the cell, then the body is not getting properly fueled. Okay? And that's the role of insulin, is to get that fuel into the cell where it can be converted to energy. So in type 2 diabetes, there is not a shortage of insulin or of glucose. There's plenty of both of them. It's simply that there is insulin resistance. And what does insulin resistance mean? Well, let's first understand what insulin does. It's the key that unlocks the door to get the glucose into the cell, but in type 2 diabetes, that lock that you see right there is all gummed up, 
okay it's not the insulin is not allowed to do its job to get it in and so then the the glucose raises in the blood sugar so the contributing one main contributing factor then would be fat in the diet or or excess fat on the body that can have a paralyzing effect for the insulin getting that into the cell so um, I'm not going to go through all these, but this shows the progression of where we've come from. The uh, first study that helped us really understand that diabetes is not the result of sugar actually happened in 1923, and um, we better understood digestion of sugars. And if you want this information, I can share it with you later. Um, but I'm going to go quickly through these. and. Uh, as you can see it's not new information um, and getting back to today so the National Institute of Health the Journal of Geriatric uh, Cardiology they published in 2015 they said plant-based diets remember plant-based diets would be those that are high in the fruits vegetables grains nuts and seeds legumes um, are effective tools for type 2 diabetes prevention and management and can reduce microvascular and macrovascular complications okay um, the um, damage that is happening in the blood vessels whether it be large vessels or small vessels that's the interpretation there so I'd like to show you this um, video real quick that uh, shows us what a plant-based diet could look like we're actually going to go to the diabetic diner you are traveling to another dimension a dimension not only of diabetes prevention but diabetes reversal a wondrous land of fruits and vegetables you are entering the diabetics diner Welcome to the diner. Hi, do you guys have anything vegan here? Hopefully, low and fat. Definitely, our entire menu. Oh, wow. For two, please. Absolutely. In the future, when people realize that high fat diets cause type 2 diabetes, they will go to restaurants and ask for low fat, plant based food. insulin resistance and that is the cause of type 2 diabetes look at all this amazing food it's delicious and there's no sacrifice on this approach
might think that diabetics can't eat fruit as well. It's a perfect food for diabetics. It's full of water and fiber, and the sugar is not an issue when it's not accompanied by a diet high in fat. And I found this restaurant thanks to you, we have Happy Cow. Well, Happy Cow has over 50,000 vegan and vegetarian restaurants and health food stores listed all over the world. You can find plant-based listings, vegan, vegetarian restaurants, and health food stores. You can make this dream a reality in your own kitchen by downloading all these recipes on our website for free at MrMrsVegan.com. And you can get restaurants in your own area to make healthy, low-fat, plant-based food. If you know anybody with type 2 diabetes, share this video with them. And maybe you can even make some of these recipes together. In your own kitchen. In your door. So, with type 2 diabetes, you have two choices. One, you have needles, pills, complications, but you could eat anything or you can make lifestyle changes you can eat a whole food plant-based diet exercise drink water rest well and not have the complications of diabetes and possibly not have to deal with needles pills either <laughs> and feel great <laughs> okay very good <laughs> all right so myth or fact sugar causes diabetes Carbohydrates are bad for diabetics. Proteins are better than carbohydrates for diabetics. You can adjust medication insulin to cover whatever you eat. Okay, we're not so sure on that one because you could, but then you're going to have uh, other issues that you will have to, to deal with. Okay, desserts are not allowed with diabetes. We are going to be serving a meal tomorrow, and you are welcome to partake of that meal. There is no charge, and it will be a plant-based meal, and it will um, also include a dessert. We will have a fruit dessert for those who choose that, but we will also have a dessert that uh, will be completely appropriate for someone with diabetes if they so choose to have that. Okay? Uh, diabetic diet is too restrictive. There is an opinion on that, right? We have our own opinion that we can say, is it too restrictive or is it not? But we have found that those who actually uh, increase their plant food consumption actually broaden their food choices so that they have um, more pleasure and more enjoyment from the food that they actually eat. A diabetic diet has too many rules and is hard to understand. You know, if, if we understand with diabetes that the whole plant kingdom, if you will, within, you know, safe to eat, of course, um, is available to us and that we don't have to worry about counting carbohydrates for the rest of our life or sugar grams or balancing those carbohydrates all those things are important when you first uh, have been di diagnosed with diabetes we actually do need to understand what is a carbohydrate how can we balance it you know those are the first steps but as you progress and you start reversing the disease you eventually will not need to count carbohydrates you will not need to um, have a diet that is very difficult and hard to understand you have to count calories I already gave you the answer to that and sugar grams for the rest of your life no you do not okay so our program here for reversing diabetes is called a start a new you program it's a lifestyle coaching program it includes uh, group activities uh, uh, presentations by medical professionals like myself our uh, doctors and nurses and um, we have activities that include meal planning uh, that are specific for you. We, we help each other in that. We also do hands-on cooking classes and uh, field trips that include learning how to grocery shop as well as 
eating out. Those are experiences that we need to know because we're all going to need to grocery shop and at some point we're all going to eat out. All right, so how do we do it in a way that would be appropriate for diabetes? It includes 24 sessions. The value of this program is rated over $4,000. However, we give it to you I should tell you that some insurance now are beginning as of this month, uh, 2018, April. Um, Medicare, as well as some of the others, are covering these programs for prediabetes and diabetes. So you, your insurance may cover this, um, but if not, then the self uh, pay rate is $777, and that's for a year long program 24 sessions. We know from Lancet, uh, you've seen that name on our board already, 16 sessions are needed for actually reversing the disease, um, the disease process. Uh, we do 24 because that the 16 doesn't include the practical application of hands-on cooking classes as well as um, the field trips. So we want to make it very practical and help you out with this, so that's why we have chosen 24 sessions um, in, a, in a given year time. So you can start a new you, you can be free from disease and its complications, and Dr. Mills is going to be sharing with us about cardiovascular disease and uh, how to manage and reverse that. Dr. Mullins um, tomorrow at 6 o'clock is going to be sharing with us uh, how to uh, reverse and manage high blood pressure. Um, and Carol and Nancy are also going to be sharing with us some of the essentials and how to make it practical and real in our life. How, how can we apply the information? All right. So we are glad that you're here for the essential uh, for health. Uh, weekend and we want to wish you your best health.